Welcome everyone and thanks for joining us for today's webinar, Meet Vectra Match, enriching your Vectra NDR with the new Suricata Signature Engine. Before we begin with today's presentation, let's cover a few housekeeping items. This webinar is being recorded and will be sent out in a few days along with the presentation slides. Phones are muted and participants are encouraged to type questions into the Q&A tab. We encourage you to download the resources available on your screen and follow us on social media for our latest and greatest updates. Without further ado, our speaker today is Brad Woodberg, Director of Product Management. Brad, the floor is yours. All right, thanks so much, Julie. Uh, good afternoon, everyone. Uh, my name is Brad Woodberg. I'm in charge of all of our detection technology here at Vectra, so that includes all of our AI detection and now our new Vectra Match uh, product offering, which we're here to talk about today. So uh, just kind of take you through, I want to talk a little bit about uh, you know, what Vector Match is, uh, its capabilities, um, you know, why you'd want to use uh, Vector Match, use cases, architecture. We can talk a little bit about kind of what's on the near-term roadmap. And um, you know, if we have time, we have some, some additional content that we can cover. So um, uh, I will be uh, kind of monitoring the, the Q&A. So if you do have uh, questions uh, throughout, feel free to, uh, to put them in and I'll try to answer them. And then we'll, we'll also have some time probably at the end. Um, we also have some poll questions. Um, the results are anonymous, but uh, your individual results are. We're, we're going to aggregate them uh, just so you can kind of see what some of your uh, peers are saying, um, you know, within um, uh, within this presentation. So um, uh, before we get started with the actual content, we just have our, our first question, which is, um, you know, does your organization currently leverage an IDS solution? Um, this could be, um, you know, a standalone IDS, it could be open source, it could be something that is part of, say, like an NGFW, um, you know, if you could uh, uh, maybe put a, a, you know, click click the click the answer here, and the, then we can um, uh, proceed. So I'll just wait a few seconds. All right, looks like we got a good amount of answers. So, oh, wow. Pretty much everyone uh, uh, has, uh, you know, is, is leveraging it, which is really no surprise. And that's kind of what uh, we've heard from a lot of our customers, um, which is part of the reason why we we built this. Um, now, let's kind of dive in because uh, I'll talk a little bit more about that as, uh, as as we get through the slides. So, what is Vector Match? Well, at its core, Vector Match is, com uh, is is bringing and introducing a signature based capability into the Vector platform. You know, we started, Vector has always been, you know, really focused around leveraging AI for threat detection. And, you know, one of the things that we heard from customers is for a variety of different reasons, uh, they still need IDS and, uh, you know, kind of looking for ways to simplify their deployment, save money, um, and therefore Vector Match was born. Now, we're powering Vector Match with the Suricata IDS engine. Um, if you're uh, not familiar, Suricata, it's an open source IDS engine, which is um, uh, owned by a, a 501c3 uh, organization here in the US. So it's a nonprofit. Um, so it can't be like acquired by a company and, and um, you know, dismantled or anything like that. It belongs to the, to the, to the community. Um, it's been around for over 10 years, uh, really is pretty much the premier IDS engine. I'd argue it's better than, um, you know, than even uh, the commercial offerings that are out there. Um, uh, it's kind of like a successor to Snort in a lot of ways. Um, and it brings a lot of great functionality and, and we're gonna talk about that more here. Um, now, uh, Vector Mesh is powered by Suricata and I'm gonna talk a little bit about like what does the architecture look like? Uh, but maybe we can talk a little bit about, you know, what is some of the capabilities uh, that Vector Match um, uh, brings uh, to the table? So, um, uh, so first, um, we are integrating um, uh, true Suricata into the platform. Um, and uh, uh, that, um, uh, you know, means that, you know, basically we're, we're not doing like emulation, like there's other competitors out there, some of which uh, just bundle in, um, you know, product uh, emulation. So they're trying to translate Suricata signatures into their own engine. That's not what we're doing here. There's a lot of, um, you know, challenges with that type of approach. Um, you know, we're running true Suricata under the hood. I'm going to talk a little bit more about the architecture um, in, in just a few slides. Um, so it, it definitely is, um, you know, really a, a great option for customers maybe who are running Suricata or who want to be able to run Suricata because that's exactly what we're doing here. Uh, it gives you the ability to uh, bring uh, signatures into the platform. Um, as you'll see, uh, you're, you're fully in control. Uh, you can write your own signatures. You can leverage open source and community 
rule sets. You can leverage commercial rule sets or those provided uh, through industry partners. Um, it's entirely up to you. You can use any combination of the above. We'll go into some examples, but but the the key takeaway is that you know uh, uh, you you have the ability to uh, to to leverage the signatures and deploy them. Um, uh, the alerts that we generate are in the native Suricata format because, of course, we are running Suricata. And the the big benefit there is that um, you know you can take advantage of any of the um, uh, you know, industry um, uh, or community capabilities that are available. Um, you know, maybe you have like a, an app uh, as part of your seam or a plugin or a script. Um, because we are running this, you know, leveraging native Suricata, um, you know, it's able to take advantage of those solutions kind of out of the box. Uh, Suricata supports uh, IPv6. It supports um, what we call out to in detection. So this is, um, you know, think of it as like internet inbound to a DMZ style detections, not just in in which is lateral or in out which is you know kind of internal to, to external. Uh, it supports all those. Um, and then one of the things that IDS is really well suited for um, because of the nature of the, the resources and the protocols is IoT and OT security. Um, uh, Suricata has a lot of capabilities built in uh, for those. So, um, you know, it's just a, a pretty complimentary uh, solution on top of what we, what we already do with AI. Okay, I see that there's a few questions here. Um, one is around competition. So I actually have some slides on that. So I'm gonna come back to that one. Um, and uh, how does it support in the large scale enterprise? I also have a slide on that. So I'm going to come back to both those questions. Please uh, do keep them coming um, because I'll make sure to really uh, double click on them. I have a, a couple uh, slides that, that, that I'm planning to cover uh, just those. So um, yeah, really, really appreciate the, uh, the engagement. Um, okay. So let's talk about, um, you know, we, we, we've said, hey, uh, we're, we're bringing Suricata into, um, you know, into the platform. Um, uh, you know, we are, um, you know, here are the capabilities, but maybe it's useful to also, um, you know, just take a moment to talk about, you know, how does signatures compare to AI and threat intel? Keeping in mind that, you know, the, the Vectra Detect platform already has AI and threat intel, we're bringing in that kind of uh, middle ground signatures. Um, if you think about it, really, we've solved the really hard problem with AI. Um, you know, when it comes to, um, you know, the, the, the real focus is with AI, we're not trying to detect any specific threat. We are trying to uh, detect uh, categories of behaviors. Um, so regardless of what the tool is uh, or, you know, what version of the tool, uh, uh, you know, is being leveraged, like we can pick those up if they're part of the, the types of behaviors that, that we identify. So maybe a good example is is um, one of many. I mean, we have a whole portfolio of these, but, but you know, just a pretty, pretty simple one to understand um, is exfil detections. So, you know, either looking for the gathering of data internally, um, kind of data staging, uh, or um, the exfil, the actual exfiltration where you're moving data out of the organization in, you know, out to like an external resource. Well, um, all of our AI has been designed to be um, you know, able to detect those behaviors. So it doesn't matter what tool is being used, whether that, that tool is encrypted or not, what protocol that tool is using. Um, uh, to send this information, you know, if if it is, um, uh, you know, uh, basically TCP IP based, um, you know, and it's moving data around in a, um, you know, in, in a very suspicious manner, um, then we will be able to pick up on that. Whereas like a signature technology is going to be looking for this specific uh, tool, this specific version of a tool. Um, uh, so it's a, it's a little bit more narrow in its focus. Um, you know, AI is able to detect uh, both known and unknown attacks. So um, you may have heard um, there was a big, um, uh, you know, um, uh, you know uh, release by CISA um, around uh, a malware uh, called Snake, maybe possibly formally Turla. Um, and, you know, as part of that, we, we actually just posted a, um, a support article um, kind of explaining all of our coverage here. Well, a lot of the things that, that that tool does, we already cover right out of the box because we're looking for those different types of behaviors. Um, you know, it's not that we have to worry about looking for a specific, you know, pattern or string. So AI is really geared towards detecting entire classes. And it's a lot harder to evade um, uh, that because you know in the exfil example you have to move the data. It's not a um, uh, you know it's not something that you can simply um, 
uh, you know, avoid. So, so AI is really focused around the 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 the, the overall uh, uh, behaviors. Uh, signatures are going to be. Uh, uh, you know, faster to develop. So there, there's definitely an advantage there that they're they're very inexpensive to build. Um, they're they're targeted against specific threats, um, and um, you know they're 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 looking for known indicators. Um, you know, within an environment. So that that has advantages and disadvantages. Uh, that you know, one of the key advantages is that you know something is already known that you know known to be bad. Then it's um, you know it's it's able to classify that, um, and uh, you know. We do see a lot of reuse of malware infrastructure, so there's definitely things that signatures contribute. Um, you know, they're looking at network bytes, uh, so basically the traffic that flows by. Uh, we're trying to to fingerprint that. Um, uh, so regardless of you know where it's coming from or to, you know, we can we can ha match those indicators and generate an alert. And then kind of at the the bottom of the the. The, the inverted pyramid is threat intel. So threat intel is is going to be um, uh, very, very much uh, you know very specific. In the case of, of a hash, it's kind of immutable. It's you know if you make any change to this app, it's going to have a different hash. Um, uh, you know IPs, um, you know they can change come and go over time, but they are kind of they're an address. They are a you know a, a kind of an endpoint. Domains can map to multiple IPs, so you can kind of see how how they start to um, you know. The, the actual breadth and coverage increases over time. And now with what we're doing here in Vectra, we're able to cover this entire um, uh, pyramid because everything from the, the known indicators, whether it is a, an, an, you know, a, a, like a network-based IOC or a, a pattern of bytes, a signature, or, or of course, originally the AI behaviors, we're able to bring all of those to the table. Okay. So there's a question around, uh, 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 so, so I'm gonna I'm gonna come back to this one in uh, I think just the very next slide um, uh, around why why do this right okay so um, uh, great timing so you know we listen to our customers uh, at the end of the day and one of the things that we've heard um, especially you know in in recent times um, is hey. I still need to run IDS. I have some reason where, where I, it's just required, and we'll talk about some of those use cases in a moment. Um, but um, you know, hey, uh, you know, I need to run it for compliance, or my SOC needs it. Um, wh whatever the driver may be, um, you know, customers were kind of left with either having to, um, uh, you know, to, to deploy redundant solutions kind of side by side um, uh, or, or not being able to take advantage of AI where they know that, hey, we need AI to be able to cover a number of uh, different attack surfaces. And so, you know, in working you know, with our customers and, and listening to the feedback, we came up with a way that we could help you know, you both save money um, and also simplify your your deployment complexity, um, as you'll see when we get to the architecture slide, because we're able to group everything together um, under one single you know platform. There's no additional hardware to deploy, no software to deploy, just uh, uh, simply uh, some com a few configuration elements, um, and uh, you know. That that really uh, you know goes a long way, especially in you know 2023 these days. You know everyone is is super interested in how can I you know save money, how can I simplify my deployment, um, and you know there is you know while, while I'd say you know the we, we solve the hard problem first with the AI. Um, you know there are some things that signatures are good at. Well, I, I don't think that we've like so much written off IDS is, is say like that, that it simply isn't enough, um, that there's things, you know, whether, when it comes to encryption, um, you know, where, where, um, you know, you need some additional capabilities, cloud and SaaS. Um, and so, you know, we've actually now kind of built all that into the product so that we can cover those other areas without compromise while giving customers the flexibility to write their own signatures, deploy industry rule sets. Um, and, um, you know, there, you know, be able to, to not have to, to, to kind of sacrifice. So, um, you know, I, I, there, there's definitely a couple more things. I should also mention my, my background, uh, maybe that'd be helpful. Um, so, you know, I've been with Vectra, it'll be two years uh, uh, later this summer, um, but actually prior to, to joining, I ran the emerging threats team at Proofpoint for uh, over six years. And so emerging threats is the, um, you know, they, they actually helped found the 501c3 organization that, builds and runs Suricata. You know, I've spoke at Suricon several times. You know, I helped manage that rule set. So I, I definitely see, you know, value. Um, it's just, you know, it's kind of, 
you, you need to you need to be able to to tell the end to end story, and, and that's what we're able to do now. And let, let me just also say in conclusion there that I think things have also changed a bit over time, right? There was a time in, in probably the earlier vector days where you know maybe customers would say, hey, we need this AI. Um, uh, it's fine that it's a, a separate solution because you know it's it's such a you know exceptional technology. Um, you know, and as more and more customers have looked to add that, you know, and, and, and they're looking for these cost savings, you know, that, that has changed over time where they're like, hey, I really want this. I just don't want to have to deploy another box. How can you help us? And so that's really, you know, what, um, uh, you know, wh wh where we've um, uh, kind of uh, uh, come into play here. So um, there's a question around the, uh, the snake uh, um, uh, article. Um, so, well, there's, um, let me see. I don't know if I can post in the chat here. Um, uh, I can figure out a way to do it, um, or we can send it out. But 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 basically, there's um, uh, the on the CISA uh, website. Um, they um, uh, put out uh, a notification. So if you just type in CISA and, and CISA, uh, you'll come to that very very detailed write up. And then um, I know we just published an article. Uh, let me just double check real quick. I believe it's. Um, on our it's, a, it's on our knowledge base article uh, our knowledge base site i believe the number is 1645 but let me just double check that real quick yes perfect um so so if you're if you just uh, go to support.vectorai um and you type in you know 1645 or turla or snake um it'll come up at, with an article that we we kind of break down all of our um uh you know all of our different uh, capabilities uh and, and what we detect okay Will Vector integrate scores? Okay, great. So there's a question around, will Vector Match integrate scores into the flagship NDR product? Uh, excellent question. So, so um, that's part of our direction with the roadmap, and I'm going to talk a little bit more about it, but, but it's definitely you know, our intention to be able to you know, do a lot more than, than you know, just be an IDS, right? Uh, 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 you know, we, we see a lot of value where the sum of having IDS plus the NDR capabilities with AI and the SaaS and our endpoint integrations, you know, can all go a long way to, um, you know, to, to make the solution better than, than others in the market. So that's, that's definitely kind of uh, part of our intent of, of where we're going to take this. It's not there just today. I'm going to talk a little bit more about what's available now, um, but, but it's very, very, very much top of mind. So, um, you know, I, I just wanted to say a few more words on the use cases, and then we'll, we'll talk about the, the architecture and how it works. Um, so, um, you know, again, a lot of this came to be from listening to our customers like yourselves, um, and probably the the number one requirement that, that we heard um, uh, was around compliance. Um, so customers would say, hey, look, you know, we need to have IDS. It's not an option. Um, we either need it for our internal, uh, you know, governance, risk, and compliance teams. Uh, we need it for a government regulator or maybe an industry uh, regulation like PCI. Uh, maybe we need it uh, for a business partner, right? Um, uh, you know, maybe we're a supplier and we're literally not allowed to connect to, um, you know, a manufacturer's uh, VPN system. Uh, without having uh, these pieces in place, regardless of what the the compliance driver was, um, you know we we need to have it. And so, um, you know, oftentimes we also heard that a lot of the compliance was driven around CVEs. Uh, so basically, um, you know, either being able to say we're not vulnerable to this because we don't run the software, we're not vulnerable to the CVE because um, we've patched, or we're not vulnerable because we have a compensating control like Vector Match, um, which can detect. Um, uh, the, uh, the, the actual, uh, exploits and vulnerabilities. So, um, you know, the vector match, uh, because it has the ability to kind of fingerprint, uh, CVEs is a really good solution here on top of just solving, satisfying the, the general C cert, um, uh, requirements. Um, uh, next up uh, was, you know, hey, we need uh, IDS because our SOC needs it. Um, oftentimes, threat hunters in, in a SOC, especially in larger environments, um, you know, really want IDS because um, you can use it in a way where it isn't always about, you know, hey, I'm going to look at every alert, but rather I'm going to use it to power threat hunting workflows. IDS is basically a labeled data set. It's matching patterns on the network um, and, and kind of describing what that activity is. And so that can be really useful uh, to be able to match interesting activity um, that, uh, that, that, that you want to use to kind of act as a launching uh, 
board um, for other types of investigations. Um, similarly, another SOC use case is around um, uh, adding context to investigations. So if you're investigating something, you know, again, IDS um, you know, with high fidelity signatures can provide some additional useful information of what we saw um, you know, uh, uh, you know, e even even if it's not used to you know, influence like the score priority, um, uh, the goal can be to be able to um, you know kind of uh, uh, enrich uh, a, a, a discovery process and investigations to give you additional information on where to go. So context was a big one, and the last piece was coverage. So um, certain customers have said, "Hey, um, you know, maybe we already run IDS, um, but." Um, you know, we might only run it on our perimeter. We've really been meaning to expand it, um, you know, to be able to detect, um, you know, east-west threats uh, that can move laterally within an environment. Um, you know, can, you know, what, what can you do to help? Well, you know, with Vector Match, because we're often placed in you know, a, a position to be able to have visibility into both the north and south and east-west um, uh, parts of the network, uh, you know, we're in a perfect position to be able to do that IDS inspection. So you don't have to deploy another solution. You've already plugged us in and all you have to do is flip on a switch and then we have uh, vector match alerts which are flowing. Um, and then for, I'd say probably the larger customers, um, you know, some might wanna take a defense in depth approach where um, for instance, uh, maybe you run a certain EDR on your endpoint, um, uh, it, but you wanna run a different EDR engine on your mail gateway and your web gateway. Um, it's kind of a perfect opportunity um, you know, it, it, on the IDS realm, because maybe you already run IDS, um, you know, with, with one vendor, and now you're already inspecting this traffic, you're already mirroring it to us, um, you know, being able to incorporate that here um, is, um, you know, is, is, is pretty uh, powerful and important. And so we can do that, uh, again, with the flip of a switch. All right. So uh, now, just uh, another question for you. Um, you know, are 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 you specifically uh, responsible for um, you know uh, uh, in, interacting with your compliance teams um, when it comes to uh, to CVEs? So uh, you know, uh, you know, if 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 you have to kind of answer the the beck and call of uh, you know, hey, are we vulnerable to this, or do we have coverage for this? Um, that's kind of the the question. And uh, while, while we're waiting there, there was a question around uh, vector match pricing and licensing model. Uh, so, um, uh, so the way that, that we've done it um, is uh, uh, that we, we license it the same way as we license uh, Detect for Network. So basically, um, uh, Detect for Network, you know, there, there's, there's um, you know, basically an IP cost. So, so we license it based on the number of, of concurrent active IPs in your network. Um, and uh, uh, vector matches is, is a, is a, you know, is a small percentage of that. So uh, it doesn't matter how many sensors you have, how much, um, you know, gigabits of traffic um, or anything like that. We just scale it uh, alongside your detect for network license. And then um, you can uh, deploy it, uh, you know, to your extent, um, uh, you know, when it comes to like virtual sensors, we don't charge for those. Um, uh, so those are, uh, you know, at, at no cost, it's just the IP license and uh, the, the uh, vector match kind of, again, follows along with the tier pricing there. All right, cool. So it seems like, you know, a, a good chunk of you are responsible for having to, to engage uh, with your governance, risk and compliance, and, 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 and then some aren't. So I'm guessing, you know, on this call, we probably have a lot of folks um, that that maybe are um, you know a part of like the secu the the SOC team and then other parts uh, that, that that are uh, responsible for um, you know actually being architects and engaging. So that's that's great to see. All right, so uh, let's talk a little bit about the the architecture because I know that there was um, uh, some early questions here around um, you know how does this work and how does it scale. Um, so first off, the way that we do this is um, we're actually running Suricata directly in the Vectra sensor. Um, so um, there's no additional hardware to, to deploy, as I mentioned earlier. There's no additional software. Um, uh, this actually runs right in the sensor. Now, um, uh, this isn't meant to be strictly proportional, um, but but I wanted to just call out the fact that we we dedicate hardware within the sensor um, uh, to running Suricata and and. Part of our requirement uh, to engineering was that um, Suricata needs to be able to run um, uh, you know, independently 
um, so that you know it cannot in any way impact any other aspect of the system. You know, Surcot is very robust, just just to be clear. Um, you know, it is a, a really really solid product. Uh, it scales up to you know I, I'm not saying in our deployment here, but you know it's been deployed you know in very large systems up to hundreds of gigabits. So it, it definitely has the ability to scale commensurate with um, you know the the right hardware. Uh, capabilities, but um, uh, you know what we wanted to design here is to make sure that you know if there was any kind of issue with Soricata, it would in no way impact our ability to generate metadata. It wouldn't impact any of our AI detections, and so we do that by carving out you know CPU cores, memory, disk, and then also we we uh, use a non-blocking architecture so that we actually are copying packets from our flow engine to Soricata in a in a non-blocking way. So that even if Suricata, you know, couldn't keep up or something, it wouldn't matter. We'd continue to process them. Um, we we do generate alerts and things like that if that's if that's happening. Um, but um, uh, you know, it wouldn't impact any other uh, you know aspect of of the system. So there is a bit of uh, performance impact on the the sensor just because we do have to carve out those resources. Um, uh, but um, uh, there's really n none other on the, the rest of the, the implementation. Again, this runs right in. Um, it's just a simple configuration flag that, that you flip and you're good to go. Now, um, you know, when it comes to uh, how the alerts are, are generated, um, you know, they are the alerts for the IDS are, are flowing right from the vector sensor. So um, that's because, you know, by running it on the sensor, we keep the architecture consistent. Um, there's no real, we'll say it's a negligible amount of uplift, but, but it's truly negligible um, uh, from how much information needs to flow from the sensor to the brain because it's just those, those summarized alerts. Um, uh, and then you have the existing metadata that we generate, which powers both our AI and that and it all, that metadata also powers our products like Recall and Stream, uh, which is you know basically our kind of version of um, you know, we have a cloud-based version which stores all the network transactions in Zeek format um, in the cloud, and then Stream is basically publishing them to your own uh, seam. So uh, those are complementary products, but it just goes to show you know, we're, we're leveraging the metadata both to provide to you, but also to power our AI detections uh, under the hood. There's really no impact uh, on the, um, you know, on, on the brain itself. Um, it's negligible. So in this uh, first phase uh, that we've delivered, um, which just came out, uh, uh, you know, basically very, very end of March, so it was been out for for roughly a month. Um, uh, we then send the alerts on to like your your seam or your sore. Uh, we support um, uh, several different flavors of syslog as well as Kafka. Um, so basically every seam and, and sore uh, tip and things like that, um, uh, you know, support. Um, uh, you know, processing uh, uh, those uh, these days, and we're sending in the native Suricata format, so um, uh, so you have access to it. Now, when it comes to how do you manage vector match? Well, it's really simple. Um, you know, just like other aspects of the vector deployment, um, you simply interact with the brain. Um, the brain is going to handle all the the rest of the tasks with the sensor. It handles the software, the 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 software updates and, and all those things and configuration management. So all you need to do is really just once you've turned on a sensor, because you can turn on vector match on a sensor by sensor basis, you upload a policy, you tell us which sensors you want that policy to go to, and then the, the brain takes it from there and it's going to distribute those uh, to all the sensors. It also is responsible for not only pulling the, the alerts, uh, which happen you know in 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 real time uh, but also uh, you know it pulls health information and other statistics um, which can be useful uh, you know to to you as an operator um, you can run different policies uh, on a um, you know on a, a engine by engine uh, sensor by sensor basis um, so it's it's really entirely up to you um, uh, to uh, to kind of define them and which which ones you want to go to uh, for maximum flexibility so um, maybe it's good to also, you know, just talk about like what what are some of the the, the advantages here? Um, well, you know, 
you know, because you're in full control. So you have full control over the, the IDS policy. Uh, you can write your own signatures. You can leverage uh, open rule sets like ET Open, which is a fantastic uh, rule set uh, that's out there. Um, uh, you know, that the, 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 the inputs are provided by the community uh, members just like yourselves, but, um, uh, you know, it goes through the exact same QA process as the pro rule sets uh, and again the pro rule set includes the open um, so there's no difference in quality at all um, it goes to the same enrichment process um, it's just a matter of you know who wrote the signature if it's written by anyone other than proof point um, or if it's written by proof point based on others research it goes into open if it's written by proof point it goes into pro uh, based on their own research so you can leverage, you know, the, those open rule sets, you can leverage, um, you know, ET Pro, um, uh, you can leverage rules uh, written by uh, you know, industry partners or really any combination of the above. Um, and then, you know, just from a roadmap perspective, I mean, we are looking at adding some of our own Vectra proprietary rules as well. Um, you know, we have a really fantastic MDR uh, team here, um, and as well as a threat research team. So we're constantly uh, doing, um, you know, lookups and, and, and learning new things that sometimes we see that, you know, we haven't found other other traces of detections for, uh, so we can add that as, as a value add to our customers. Um, Another big advantage of just Suricata in general is the fact that, I mean, yes, Suricata is open source uh, if you really want to, to dig in and look at, um, you know, all that content. Um, but, um, you know, one of the things that just as a uh, as an operator that I found uh, to be particularly valuable is the fact that, you know, you can actually look at the rules themselves um, and see exactly what it's matching on. So, um, uh, you know, the, the green part of this is just kind of like your, it's kind of like a firewall rule. It's the, the five tuple of, of what you're matching. Then the blue is like, what is the signature name? The orange here is basically the context of what it's matching. So this year we're looking for um, a PowerShell payload uh, in an iframe, which is uh, definitely sounds pretty sketchy to me. Um, uh, and uh, then the rest in the red is just metadata that's used to enrich the signature. It's not really used by Suricata, um, but it's sent as part of the alerts. Um, and it's good. You can use it both for building, you know, constructing a policy, um, but you can also use it for, um, uh, you know, kind of building out, um, uh, you know, uh, uh, reports and other things in your seam because that information um, will be listed there as well. So it's really cool, you know, if, if you're looking, if you're staring at an incident um, and you want to better understand that it's not that you have to understand what any of this means at all, uh, but, you know, for some folks, they really want to understand, you know, what did, you know, Vectra or what did the author think was so interesting here that they wrote the signature, that information is available where a lot of commercial IDS is, it's kind of a, a dead end, right? It's, hey, you know, uh, like there's, we can't share the pattern that we're matching here. Um, so you're just going to have to trust us. You know, it's, it's, it's a better, better um, solution. Okay. And then I just wanted to kind of show you kind of like what it, it, an alert looks like. Um, you know, again, uh, you don't have to be terribly familiar with any of this. It's all, you know, in JSON format, it's going to have a combination of all of the, um, uh, you know, all, all, all your traditional network uh, uh, information, you know, bytes sent, received, uh, uh, you know, uh, uh, the five tuple of, of detection, signature name, you're going to have uh, the, the additional metadata fields. Uh, but then one of the really cool things is that Suricata also includes the packet payload that triggered this alert. And so um, it can be useful to just kind of see like, hey, what, what actually in here actually match? And in fact, you can take this uh, packet information. Um, there's a tool called uh, Eve to JSON, I believe it is. Um, we have we talk about it in our uh, knowledge base article, but yeah, I think it's Eve to JSON. And you can convert that string into um, a PCAP format uh, so you can load it up in Wireshark. So that's included, you know, with every Suricata alert that the, that the platform generates, which is super, super um, uh, useful. All right. Um, so, uh, uh, you know, just kind of curious, like, you know, are you satisfied with the, you know, effectiveness of your existing solution? Um, you know, is it helpful? Um, yeah, just kind of, if you wouldn't mind uh, filling that in. And then we are going to uh, continue to chat a little bit about, you um, uh, you know, kind of what we've released uh, and what is coming in the form of the roadmap. Cool. 
All right. So, um, you know, as I mentioned, uh, we just released this at the very end of March, um, and um, uh, you know, we uh, have introduced it with support for all sensors. So, uh, all of our, our hardware, our virtual, our cloud sensors, they all support uh, the vector match integration. Uh, to start, it's a bring your own signature uh, based model. Um, uh, uh, you know, we're looking at adding uh, some of our own rules. Uh, you can configure rules on a per sensor basis. Uh, we have API management. Uh, so this basically gives you the ability to, um, uh, you know, to, to manage this over the vector API, which is um, uh, really a, a valuable uh, for automation. Um, and, uh, you know, all the detections are sent to a seam. We talked about the fact this is this is a licensed product uh, uh, add-on today. No additional hardware or software components, but you know, really, as you'll see, um, this is something that we want to, you know, not just kind of you know slap Suricata into the platform and walk away. We want to make a um, you know a, a, you know a, a true investment um, in using this um, and, and using it to further enrich the the platform um, as time goes on. Okay, uh, there's also a question around. If you keep the payload, doesn't increase the amount of storage to keep all that. Um, so you know we send uh, the again. It, it's just going to be what Suricata matches today, which is the the packet you know kind of the the packet payload of the offending uh, condition that triggered the signature. Um, usually it's not all that large uh, because we're not talking about like entire sessions or anything like that. Um, you can filter that out. Like most seams allow you to filter out fields if you didn't want to store that, but uh, we make it available. Um, there, there is also a, an option. So, so the, I shared the JSON version, um, but we do have a couple other uh, versions like the Suricata fast log, um, which is like minimal info and it doesn't have any of that other enrichment. It's just kind of like the five tuple signature name and signature ID um, timestamp, you know, just a few fields. That's also an option that you can configure um, if you if you want. All right. So, um, you know, we, uh, we just uh, updated our uh, Splunk app and technical add-on. Um, uh, to incorporate a vector match. So, so this is, it, it's part of the existing uh, uh, Splunk app that we have. So you don't need like a separate one, um, but uh, there's a version 1.4.0 that, that you can update to. And then all this inf alert information um, is also included. Um, uh, and we're, we're definitely looking at some other seams as well. This is just kind of like lowest hanging fruit for us and in, in the, you know, based on also the, the number of customers using our, our Splunk app. So we started there, but we're definitely looking at some of the others like Sentinel and, and you know, QRadar and ArcSight and, and things like that. But it just gives you a good sense of, of some of the possibilities. Okay. Uh, yeah, and we're just curious, like, um, you know, which vendor do you guys currently use for Steam? Um, you know, just trying to help us think about which ones we should be doing next. Um, you know, obviously we started with Splunk, but, uh, you know, if there's uh, one a, a particular where you're like, hey, I use this and it'd be helpful uh, for you guys to know that because, um, you know, you should build some additional integrations on that. We would gladly solicit that info. Just a few more seconds. And then we're gonna talk about what's coming because so far we've talked about what's there today. Um, but we have a lot of new things that are uh, coming, um, you know, as, as part of the, uh, the deployment. Cool. All right. So, um, uh, you know, in the, in the initial release, we focused on uh, our API uh, support, um, but we're adding um, a web UI for the management um, that, that should be coming, um, uh, you know, uh, very soon here. Uh, uh, just, uh, yeah, we, we do, by the way, we do 11 feature releases every year. So basically we, uh, every month, except we combine November and December because of all the holidays um, and New Year's. Um, but um, yeah, so, so every month uh, we have new stuff coming out. You may have seen if you're a customer already, uh, we just released our 7.7 .7 release, um, uh, went out yesterday. 
Um, and then we have some more, you know, coming at the later this month. So definitely uh, uh, pretty exciting uh, how, how fast these things are coming. The web UI, it's it's really, uh, you know, probably more geared to the first time you set something up uh, or if you're doing a, a POC, um, you know, most customers are going to leverage the API because you can easily automate the, the actions, you know, like the daily rule set updates and things like that can all be automated. So that's there already. We're kind of just backfilling the, uh, you know, UI for the, the management. Um, and then um, uh, one of the, you know, actually really cool differentiators that uh, Vectra is bringing to the table um, that you won't get in other, um, you know, other solutions. So I know there was a, a competitive que uh, uh, question. I'm going to kind of touch on that a little bit more here. Um, uh, but, um, uh, you know, we're actually integrating our host ID information into um, the Suricata alert. So, of course, host ID, um, you know, is the ability to track you know, host endpoint, regardless of what IP address it has. So, you know, maybe in the morning you connect in through a VPN, then you go into the office, you're in building A, then building B, then you go to a coffee shop and then you come home. You know, you could have a dozen different IP addresses throughout the day. Um, and and so for your threat, um, you know, incident response teams, it actually puts a pretty big onus on them because they have to try to stitch together, you know, just a highly mobile uh, life cycle. And so by using Vectra, because we, we automatically track that, we have like 20 20 different sources um, that we use, um, uh, you know, both passive, most of them are passive, but some of them are active, like EDR integrations, um, to be able to, you know, identify the host ID information. It's automatically gleaned, um, you know, right from the, the system. Um, and uh, so this is going to be a, a key differentiator because we're going to start uh, enriching our um, uh, our Suricata logs, or at least we'll give you, it's, it's an optional thing because um, just some customers are just concerned that, you know, from a parsing perspective, they, they want an option, but optionally um, you can enrich the Suricata alerts with some new vector stanzas where we'll, in, you know, enrich it with the host ID uh, information that we know about, which makes it a lot easier to be able to, um, you know, line up uh, these these different types of activity, regardless of where um, you know an endpoint has gone uh, throughout its uh, life cycle. And then um, you know we want to you know treat uh, this information as kind of a um, uh, you know a, a, a new source of metadata. Uh, so we're we're going to be building this out in the recall and stream. You know historically recall and stream have been you know us basically generating in Zeek format. Um, uh, metadata information, you know, for like every network transaction, every flow, every DNS, every HTTP, TLS, Kerberos, SMB, there's a whole long list. Um, and, uh, and and now we're adding vector match to that. Now it won't be in Zeek format because uh, it's in Suricata uh, format, but the other metadata transactions are in Zeek. Um, and, um, you know, this, this will be right in our you know, again, if you're using Recall, which is our, our cloud-hosted version, um, you know, all this information will be stored there, or we can send it to you um, via stream. Uh, for customers uh, of ours who are leveraging the cloud UI, so, so this is something that we're um, uh, working on launching very, very soon here. Um, you know, it's, it's, uh, it's kind of our, our next-gen uh, UI, if you will. Um, we also have some additional workflows there, so so we can actually pull in these alerts directly into the product. Um, so um, you can kind of start to see like the evolution here. You know, we started with just let's get the engine in, let's get the alerts flowing, and then over time we're we're kind of building uh, further and further in terms of how we're integrating uh, these capabilities into the the, the platform. Um, so. Uh, that's 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 a key part of uh, of what we're doing, and then kind of the step beyond that was uh, a question earlier about um, uh, you know what are you guys doing? Uh, you know, are you going to be able to leverage these uh, for host scores? And the answer is yeah, that's part of what we intend to do. That's definitely a little bit further off on the roadmap, but we are very interested in enriching the. Um, you know, the, the detections um, uh, in enriching the, the host events with this information over time. Um, and if that's something that, that you're really interested in, I definitely encourage you to, you know, connect with your your sales engineer. We'd love to hear more from you. Maybe you could be a design partner uh, with us on this um, because, yeah, we're, we're definitely putting a lot of interest uh, and a lot of effort into, um, you know, uh, 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 you know, kind of taking this to, to the next level. 
Um, now we have a whole bunch of different resources, and as Julie mentioned, we'll be sharing um, you know uh, um, you know these slides. So uh, we have uh, links in all these that that you'll have access to. Um, there's a great deal of of material, a really nice demo video. It's like four minutes long, just walks you like here's how you set it up, everything you got to know, and yeah. You're, you're good to go. It's, it's really that simple. We've built some knowledge base articles uh, around this and uh, we're updating those very frequently as we get new questions um, you know, from, from our customers. So that's that's been um, uh, super helpful. Um, let's see here. I'm going to uh, just hop into the appendix real quick because I know there's a question around competitive. Um, so let's kind of talk about that. Um, uh, you know, how does this compare to uh, some of the other solutions out there? So, um, you know, Corelite, um, you know, they're, they're running Suricata plus Zeek. That's basically what the platform. Now, their solution lacks AI. Now, I should say lacks AI detection. Apparently, they're, they're bolting on chat GPT for some explainability, um, but really they're not providing any of the AI detection. You know, we already have, you know, the, the, and that's something that, you know, we've spent you know, over a decade uh, uh, perfecting. It's not something that you can just simply gain some institutional knowledge on. It really requires very consistent and intensive investment. Um, you know, they're not going to have uh, uh, protections for, you know, like your cloud control planes. Uh, they're not going to have, um, you know, protections for like M365 or Azure AD. Um, and, you know, they're kind of just spitting out a lot of detections. They're not really prioritizing things in kind of the host uh, the host contact score. So while yes, um, you know, they are running Suricata under the hood, um, you know, you're, you're missing a lot of that. And then, you know, as, as we're rolling things out here at, you know, at us adding in the host ID is definitely going to be a big competitive benefit. Um, Suricata, I mean, again, Suricata is great, um, but, um, you know, it kind of depends on, you know, who you are as a customer, um, you know, if it's the right fit for you. Um, and, you know, really, a lot of customers have said, hey, you know, instead of having to, you know, um, uh, spend, you know, operational expenses on, um, you know, on a, a server team or, you know, folks doing software maintenance, you know, I'd rather put that into, you know, threat hunters and other security analysts and engineers, um, because at the end of the day, we need to find these threats, not just, you know, do operating system maintenance. Um, and so, you know, Suricata on its own is great, but it does require a lot of care and feeding. Um, which we can you know, really simplify here. You know, Suricata on its own isn't going to provide any of the cloud or the SaaS or, or AI. Um, uh, you know, that that's where you're going to get that with with our overall solution. Um, and then you know, compared to and and I do have a, I do have a, one more slide, so I, I do have, I do talk a little bit about extra hop and, and dark trace. Um, but you know, compared to uh, legacy standalone IDS, I mean, usually those solutions are really really expensive. Um, you know, they're they're going to lack the the AI and the metadata. Um, you know. Oftentimes, to be quite honest, you know, for, I'm sure that people who are running these types of solutions would would who would agree is like they, they kind of lack vendor investment. So, um, you know, there's a lot of vendors out there that have kind of put these product lines in kind of cash cow mode. Um, you know, they, they support them. They certainly take your money. Um, but there's not really much innovation. Um, you know, the, the teams that, you know, were, were really on the cutting edge of, of leading and building those products, those teams are long gone. They've probably gone through, you know, several different, um, you know, rotations of, of you know, life cycles of different developers and leadership. Um, they've, you know, a lot of them have changed hands through a lot of different companies. Um, and so, you know, you really shouldn't expect anything um, uh, really to, to be, you um, you know, happening there from from a significant investment perspective, um, where you know again we with adding this to Vector Match, we're able to really help you, uh, you know, save save some significant revenue. Let's talk about some of our um, our key um, uh, IDS vendors. So I actually had to update this slide because uh, just last week Extra Hop announced uh, Suricata support, um, and I thought it was really interesting because you know. They actually require an entirely separate hardware. Then they only support, based on their documentation, they only support this this hardware. So you have to buy some expensive server that you have to deploy right next to your other sensors. Um, it almost feels like they were doing a rapid response to Vectra, and they just kind of slapped it all together. But um, it's har hard to say, um, you know. But Vectra can run all this right in our existing platform. So you know, I think. You know they're not going to help you save money, and they're not going to make anything less complex. And if anything, it's it's vendor consolidation, but it's going to make it more complex. Um, uh, you know they require a cloud UI, um, so Vectra can run entirely in AirGap, 
both for our AI and for vector match. Um, you know, they can't. Um, you, you you can only do it with the cloud UI, um, and uh, you know their their AI capabilities. Uh, really, they max out at 16,000 hosts um, that they can monitor for AI. Everything else just kind of gets this really lightweight, um, you know, like like end top like uh, you know traffic analysis, but not really anything that uh, is is leveraging full AI because you know again um, it just wasn't designed to be able to scale. So um, you know while they're they're running Suricata, um, uh, you know it's going to cost you a lot more money to run that. It requires separate hardware. Um, and, uh, you know, there, there are other aspects of the solution are a lot weaker. Um, when it comes to dark trace, uh, you know, my, my understanding is that they don't really have any signature matching, uh, capabilities at all. Um, uh, you know, they, um, you, you have some like kind of, you know, detection builder functionality where you can build a lot of your own logic, but that's so, you know, that, that, that basically requires you to have to, you know, staff entire data scientists in your organization um, uh, to kind of care and feed this thing. And, you know, that's that's challenging. At the end of the day, they can't take these signatures. So when a new threat like Snake comes out, you know, they're not going to be able to, you know, build something, you know, probably too, you know, too straightforward, just import it, you know, because like here we have the signatures that were generated. Here we can just import those right into the platform and we're good to go. Um, and, um, you know, obviously we, we've heard from a lot of customers that their ML, you know, capabilities is, is not very strong and that the UI is, is weak. So, um, you know, we, we, we definitely see, uh, you know, comprehensive advantages, you know, even for other competitors that are running Suricata itself. And then as time goes on, um, you know, there's a lot more that, um, uh, that we're working on to, uh, you know, to, to further, um, you know, enrich the product line and, and make further investments. All right, so let me see here. I want to make sure that I answered all the questions. Um, uh, if I didn't, please chime in now. Okay, hold on. Okay, there's a question that I did miss. Uh, what is the benefit of replacing IDS function in my firewall uh, for other properties? processes, things like I, IPS, AV, malware. So, um, yeah, so, so basically, you know, in a nutshell, it's, you know, um, you know, why, you know, should I remove this IDS functionality uh, that, that's maybe already in my firewall? And the, the answer is that it, it kind of depends. Um, uh, you know, one, um, again, a lot of those firewalls are kind of closed source. So you're going to have very little visibility into uh, what information that that you know it's going to provide you about the detection that that triggered um, and um, you know uh, uh, that makes operating it a lot more difficult um, uh, you know additionally a lot of times those are only deployed at the perimeter so um, it's not you know it's not going to help you you know internal to your network uh, where you may not be running these capabilities um, but then for other customers um, uh, you know maybe they have no plans of replacing it at all they just want to uh, augment it or be a second vendor of record uh, because every you know every vendor is going to have a um, or every source is going to have core competencies, right? They're going to have people and practices and technology um, that that leads them to be focused in certain areas. And so by having multiple vendors, if that's something that that you know, you can uh, that you can deploy that that's going to provide, you know, kind of the, the best of, of all the world. So it really depends on on your specific uh, circumstances and technology. But, um, you know, we've, we've heard that from a lot of customers that, you know, they want to augment it um, or maybe they're not happy with kind of the closed nature of, of what they have. Okay, let's see here. Just going through here. Okay, I do have a firewall in my internal network. Okay, perfect. Yes. Um, so yeah, uh, you know that was really the the main uh, content of uh, of the presentation that we wanted to share. Um, you know, there's as I mentioned, there's a lot of great uh, resources um, that, that that we have available. Um, and uh, you'll be getting access to, um, you know, to this content. Uh, so you'll be able to, to drill in further. And, you know, if you have any questions, um, you know, we have, uh, you know, we're happy to, you can do a, a free evaluation, a full eval of this, um, 
uh, you know, be happy to come in and, and chat with you and your team on it. Um, and uh, there's a lot of a lot of great things coming here at Vector. Again, we have 11 feature releases every year, um, so we're not talking about just bug release. We're talking about new features coming out, you know, chock full. Um, uh, and so, you know, definitely expect a lot of new great things uh, to come of it. So, uh, looks like we answered all the Q and A. So, uh, Julie, I'll uh, hand it back to you. Awesome. Thank you so much, Brad. Thank you for your time today, and we hope you found this content beneficial. Again, the recording will be sent out in a few days, and a member from our team will connect with you soon. In the meantime, feel free to download the resources available on your screen, and we look forward to seeing you at our next event. Thank you, everybody.